Well, one thing I knew for sure when I moved to the cottage on the hill and started a new garden was that I was really going to have to rethink the scale, the size, and the shape of some of my plantings because I really needed to concentrate on certain kinds of plants that could fill small, narrow, tight spaces. And I think I've identified some brilliant solutions for those very problems. Starting out with this absolutely gorgeous diamond spire gardenia. What I love about it is that it's going to put it's going to produce some really beautiful fragrant single white blooms late spring through fall if I keep them fertilized. Now I've grown these before in containers in really large pots but this is the first time that I've grown them in a tight and narrow space and this is going to just be a perfect plant for this location because it wants to grow in a part sun to a part shady disposition this actually faces east so it will get morning sun and afternoon shade that most coveted of positions for any plant to grow now I also like it because I have placed it here and I was able to do so because of its small size. And as I sit in this bench or as I walk along the path and it's blooming, I am just going to adore the fragrance of those small gardenia flowers. Well, I'm especially excited about this small space solution because it's Roman Candle Podocarpus, something that I haven't grown before. It's gonna be beautiful in this tight corner mostly because of its perfect scale. So it will get anywhere from 10 to 15 feet high, but that's gonna be over a pretty long period of time and about three to four feet wide. So it very much will form fit to this location. I also love it because as its name implies, it's got these white tufts that almost look like they're illuminated. And then it's got kind of a, almost a succulent Mediterranean feel. So I love it from that perspective, from a design perspective. It is pest resistant, deer resistant, heat tolerant, drought tolerant, so it really clicks all of those boxes. I think it's going to be brilliant in this location. I also like the fact that it's got kind of gray, blue-gray overtones, and as I said, it will be just a wonderful punctuation point for this narrow corner. Well, in contrast to the silvery green of the Roman candle podocarpus, this forever goldie arbor vita is just, it's almost flaming. It has this really brilliant gold foliage, which does two things. It's really tough, but it can also illuminate any space because it can handle full sun, but it might appreciate some shade in the afternoon. Just like the podocarpus, which likes full sun to part shade, these can both handle transitioning environments. They can also both be located either in the ground or they are both magnificent as container specimens for these really tight enclosed spaces. So Forever Goldie would be brilliant flanking either side of a doorway in an area where you don't want it to get too tall. This is going to top out at about 10 to 12 and a half feet I think. Most of these just like the Roman Candle is going to be oh about three and a half to four feet wide and to a certain extent that can be manageable. It's pest resistant. It is really going to give me four season interest evergreen and I think it, it can really do the job both stylistically and practically. Well, I like anything that resembles a boxwood and the dense upright growth of this Red Sky Ilex definitely does resemble a boxwood, which I adore because of its deep green and its glossy leaves. I also adore this because it's really going to flank my rain barrel beautifully. It is going to get, oh, I think maybe eight feet tall and about three to four feet wide, not unlike the other upright Kind of conical forms of the Forever Goldie Arborvita and the Roman Candle Podocarpus. So definitely I'm into these shapes in my small garden. It can handle part sun to part shade, 
evergreen interest, but what I'm really looking forward to is the new growth, which will tip out in a reddish color and it will also provide blackberries in the winter time. So it's got multiple things to commend it, both in form and the fact that it can very, very beautifully encase and fill this small space. For all of these upright, conical, evergreen, small space solutions, a couple of things to bear in mind. If you're doing them close to and or under the eave of a roof line, you just wanna make sure that once they reach their mature size that there's clearance to any overhang or roof line. Another thing you wanna take into consideration is whether or not there's enough clearance between whatever wall there is and the plant itself. Not only do you wanna make sure that there's enough room for the plant to grow, but you also want to minimize any kind of reflected heat from the surfaces that they may be growing close to. Also take into account what your growing zone is. All of these are appropriate to my zone seven garden, but definitely check what the limitations are if you're someone that gardens on the edge of any kind of climate zone.